Greetings, everyone. This is Fred Coulter. Welcome to Church at Home. Church at Home is sponsored by the Christian Biblical Church of God, and we are dedicated to restoring original Christianity for today, because that's what's needed more than anything else in our lives living in this dangerous world. Now, why are there so many different brands of Christianity? And they all profess that they go by the Bible. But do they do as Jesus said? Remember what Jesus said? Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Now that's quite a statement, isn't it? And God to back that up and make sure that that would be possible for people to do has given us his word. What he has said has been written down. It's like one man said, well, I'll believe God if he come down here and talk to me. Well, he did. Jesus Christ, who was God before he came in the flesh, came down to earth, was born as a human being by the Virgin Mary, the only begotten of God the Father. And he had a perfect life. He never sinned. And all of his words are recorded in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And then the rest of the New Testament is what he inspired to be. And the whole of the Old Testament all the laws that apply to us today are still active. And that begins with the Ten Commandments. Now, as we are looking at, does God love people regardless of what they do? Well, that question is answered this way. For all people in the world... God loves all of them by giving them life and breath and food and water and everything that there is for life. And he's given to all of mankind dominion over the whole earth and everything on it. So in that sense, God loves every human being because in him we live and move and have our being. But we're talking about the love of God unto salvation versus the traditions of men and the sins of men. Now, Jesus was crucified on the Passover day, 14th day of the first month, according to the sacred calendar. And he was betrayed that night by Judas Iscariot. And he gave some very special instructions to his disciples who were to be his apostles. Because after Judas left to betray Jesus, there were the 11 apostles left. So let's just review a little bit of what he told them. Let's come here to John 14 and verse 15. If you love me, now that's conditional. And we have seen God's love is not unconditional. God's love for salvation is special. God's love for all mankind to give them the things that they need to live, etc. That is not love unto salvation. Love unto salvation is entirely different. 
If you love me, keep the commandments, namely my commandments. And as the Lord God of the Old Testament in the flesh, that has a great deal of meaning, as we will see. Then he says he's going to send the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the truth. Now, why is it important to receive the Spirit of the truth? Because human nature, the carnal mind, is enmity against God, an enemy of God, and is not subject to the law of God, and neither, indeed, can be. Now, in the religious world of fake Christianity today, it's expressed by men who have different doctrines than what Jesus said, different teachings than what the Bible tells us. Hello everyone, Father Ethan here in St. John's Chapel at St. Clement's Episcopal Church in Philadelphia. This week's video is a continuation of the series that I began last uh, Wednesday, on Ash Wednesday, on prayers. We began with the blessing of the ashes, and so this week, I'm actually going to share a set of prayers that are very important to me. They're prayers that I say often. These are the prayers that I say as I vest for Mass. So let's examine very carefully how Jesus said he would manifest himself to those who were his, but not to the world. So let's come here to verse 21. Now I want you to examine your own heart, your own mind, and really think about what I'm going to read to you here because these are the words of Jesus Christ. Verse 21, the one who has my commandments and is keeping them, that is the one who loves me. Stop and ask the question, do you know the Ten Commandments? Do you keep them? What was the very first thing that God revealed to Adam and Eve? The very first thing of his laws. The Sabbath command, which is the number four of the ten. And he blessed it, he sanctified it, he made it holy from the beginning. And he told in the Ten Commandments, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now, man cannot make any other day holy. Jesus never changed the commandment so that Sunday would be the day for Christians. That is a blatant, fake Christianity lie. The Eucharist is food. It strengthens us on our journey. It forgives our sins. It forgives our sins. Now because the Sabbath commandment was the first thing that God introduced Adam and Eve to in his commandment, making the seventh day holy, blessing it, and sanctifying it means that no man has the authority, not even Christ on the earth, because he's the one who created Adam and Eve and revealed the Sabbath. So no man has any authority to change that. And if you believe that man does, 
and you believe what is said by religionists concerning Sunday, you believe a lie. And you're far removed from true Christianity because Jesus Christ said that he is Lord of the Sabbath day and not man for the Sabbath day. So he said very clearly there, no man can change it. Now then, let's read verse 21 again and ask yourself, am I doing this, especially if you think you love God. Ask yourself, am I doing this? Verse 21, the one who has my commandments and is keeping them, that is the one who loves me. And the one who loves me shall be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Now that's quite a thing, isn't it? How does God manifest himself to people that want to know about God? By leading them to the truth. And if they come to the truth and they obey the truth, then they'll be led even further. Because the only way you're going to receive the love of God for salvation is by receiving the Spirit of God and keeping the commandments of God. So Judas, not as scared, wanted to know, well, Lord, how are you going to do this? So verse 23, Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, now again, ask yourself the question, Do I love Jesus? Do I love Jesus? the Father. Because remember where we started a long time ago. It is the Father who draws us. And the Father who draws us then is the one who is going to send the Holy Spirit. And he doesn't send it to anyone who does not obey him. It's that simple. So let's read what he said. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. Now that means the whole message of Jesus Christ. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all the epistles of Paul, the general epistles, all the Old Testament minus the sacrificial laws and the civil laws, because Israel was a theocracy with religious and civil laws. Now notice, this is reciprocal. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our abode with him. The key most important verse in the New Testament to receive the Holy Spirit is to receive the begettle from God, to become a son or daughter of God as a spirit being, to live in the kingdom of God forever, okay, and the Spirit of Christ, to develop the mind of Christ. Now, did Jesus ever sin? No. That's why we develop the mind of Christ. Okay, we'll see how that's done in just a little bit here. We will come and make our abode or our dwelling place with him. God sends the earnest of the Holy Spirit. Then... That is to help us have the connection with God. And so that we receive the love of God for salvation. Now notice verse 24. The one who does not love me does not keep my words. And if you change those words, you're not keeping his words. You cannot say for the Sabbath day one in seven. That's a lie. You cannot say that all the pagan holidays of this world are from God, the Father, and Jesus Christ. They're not. They are not. Now, let's just take a little brief sidebar, and let's come to Amos, the fifth chapter. Because a lot, a lot, a lot of people think, boy, oh boy, all the holidays of this world are of God. 
But what we are going to find, they are not. Because those are ancient pagan days which have been around for thousands and thousands of years, and they are now masquerading as Christian. Let's see what God says. Amos 5 and verse 23. Now I want you to think about this because the one who spoke this was the one who became Jesus Christ. And if you love God the Father and Jesus Christ, then you will keep his words. What God says to do, you will do. What God says don't do, you won't do. What God says he hates, you won't participate in any way. Verse 23, Take the noise of your songs away from me, for I will not hear the melody of your harps. That something? All the wonderful songs. And yes, they're very enticing, aren't they? Now come back here to verse 21. Because see, all those songs come along. And where during Christmas time can you go without hearing Christmas carols? And everyone thinks this is wonderful. And everyone thinks this celebrates the birthday of Jesus Christ. And everyone thinks this is a great holiday for everybody. But what does God say? Not only does he not want that music, but notice verse 21. I hate. Oh, God hates. Yes, God hates sin. God hates wickedness. God hates lawlessness. He says, I hate, I despise your feast days, and I will take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Now think about that for a minute. Go to TBN and look at all their solemn assemblies. How many of them keep the Sabbath? Well, with a few rabbis they have on there, None of them. And they would go to the death to defend Sunday. And they think that they are doing right. But rather, they are so deceived, they think they're doing the will of God. And they expect the love of God, but God says, Christ says, the one who does not love me does not keep my word. So what about you? What will you do? Do you really want God? Do you really want eternal life? Now remember where we've covered, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. You're not going to receive eternal life by a preacher saying you're going to heaven because you're not. Eternal life begins with the resurrection from the dead, not an immortal soul going to heaven. See how far off the whole world is from following the true words of God? Look at what they believe. Look at all the things that they go through, and it's all supported by the whole world. But little do they realize they have been deceived, and by none other than Satan, the devil. Notice what he says, verse 24. But let judgment roll down like waters, and righteousness like a mighty stream, cleansing water, getting rid of the sin, and let righteousness come instead of sin. Now here is an unusual statement. Now I want you to think about this for a minute. Here God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt. In Egypt, there were many, many gods. And the whole destruction of Egypt was to destroy their gods and take away the firstborn of man and beast because of the horrendous sins of Egypt. And he called his people out of Egypt. But a lot of them, even during the 40 years in the wilderness, with God present there 
in the cloud by day and the fire by night, they didn't believe him. So I'm going to read an astonishing verse here. Have you offered sacrifices and offerings to me forty years in the wilderness, O house of Israel? You would think they would be, but they didn't. Now, a little sidebar here. Why do we have so much in the Old Testament which shows how the people sinned and went against God? That's to teach us not to do the same thing. And look at what God did to those who sinned. So you need to think about it. But now you have carried the tabernacle of your Molech and your Chun, your images, the star of your gods, which you have named for yourself. Think about that for a minute. What's on top of a Christmas tree? A star. Now you go to our segments that we've done on Christmas, and that will tell you who that star represents. And that will tell you that you are celebrating the same gods that ancient Israel did in the wilderness when they should have been worshiping God. Now let's come back here to John 14 and verse 24 again. And think about your life. Think about what you do. Think about all the Ten Commandments of God. The one who does not love me does not keep my words. And the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. Now, have you ever thought about this? That whatever words in the Bible you reject, there are some people who say, well, I don't like that. There are some people who say, well, the Bible's full of lies. And that's because they have spiritual blindness. And they are unwilling to believe what they read. And they're more unwilling to do what they read. And that's the problem with human nature, see? So who are you actually rejecting? Just Jesus Christ? No, you're rejecting God the Father, the great sovereign who upholds the vastness of the universe. Now think about that. That's quite a contemplation, isn't it? It's not just an action doing something that isn't right. It is an action that is rejecting the ruler of the universe. Now then, let's go on a little bit further because he talks about the Holy Spirit. And just a little sidebar on the Holy Spirit. If you do not have the Holy Spirit of God, you are incomplete. Every human being has what is called in the Bible the spirit of man, which gives him intellect, which help gives him thought, and everything that there is to be human. But that's only half of the story. You are incomplete unless you have the spirit of God, because God made us to enter into his kingdom if we come to God God's way, if we love God and keep his commandments, and if we yield to him, okay? That's what God made. Now see how far that this is removed from Christianity of this world, the fake lies and the fake ministers who are out there telling you blatant, blatant, blatant lies. And too many people are gullible and believe it because they threaten them with ever-burning hell another sidebar. No one's going to roast in hell forever. That is a lie, and there is no purgatory either. Those who are rejected of God at the last judgment will be burned up, no longer existing, complete perish. 
Verse 25, I have spoken these things to you while I am yet present with you, but when the Comforter comes, even the Holy Spirit, which the Father will send in my name, that one will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance everything I have told you. That's a direct promise to the apostles so they could write the Gospels, so they could then later when Christ appeared to Paul to write the epistles of Paul and then the general epistles of James, Peter, and John, and Jude. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give it to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, nor let it fear. You have heard me say that I am going away and that I will come again. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced that I said, I am going to the Father, because my Father is greater than I. And he did. After he was crucified, died, buried three days and three nights in the grave, he rose right at the end of the weekly Sabbath, and then on the first day of the week, as the wave sheaf offering to God, he ascended to God the Father as the sin offering for the whole world. That's why he said you would rejoice. And what did he do that same day? He came back and appeared to them and opened their minds to the scriptures of the prophecies of himself in the law, in the prophets, and in the Psalms. Quite an amazing thing. So you see, true Christianity has so much more than the fake Christianity of this world. And the fake Christianity of this world is like a dead-end cul-de-sac. It's leading nowhere. And when you get to the end of it, you go round and round and round and round in circles. Now then, you need our book, Lord, What Should I Do? You need to understand the calling of God and how you can respond to Him. And then in order for you to grasp the plan of God, it is so magnificent, it is so great, it is so fantastic that it is just almost unbelievable how much love and power and strength that God has. Right for the book, from a speck of dust to a son of God, why were you born? And there's not one in a million who has a clue as to why they were born. What? is the great plan of the loving God, God the Father and Jesus Christ for mankind. What is he doing in calling those to be in the first resurrection now? And to be in the first resurrection now is a fantastic and great and marvelous thing to contemplate. Yes, indeed. Now, if you doubt that God even exists, you write for our three books. How credible is the Bible? God, no God. Geology, catastrophism, and the scriptures. How credible is the Bible? That's an amazing thing. People come along and say, oh, well, this is a lie, that is a lie. Well, I want to tell you something. I have been with the studying the Bible for over 60 years, and the only lies that I have found are those that men have added to it. And you need the Holy Bible in its original order, a faithful version. Nothing added to, nothing taken out. How credible is the Bible? God, no God. What a farce that the stupidity of evolution is. And if you believe in evolution, you are really way low on the spiritual ladder. And the final one, geology, catastrophism, and the scriptures. Yes, all the things that people have discovered about the earth and the making of the mountains and the separating of the continents, etc., God has done. So you need these three books. So you write for them, and you find out about the Holy Bible in its original order, 
and you will find this is the most accurate English Bible today. So once again, thank you for inviting me into your home. So until next time, this is Fred Colter saying, so long, everyone.